So, I am in the train. Welcome to the fifth episode of Juggle Jabber. I am in the train with Matthew Tiffany, who's going to appear in camera right now. Juggle Jabber. Hi, Matthew. Welcome very much. Welcome very much. I'm so confused. This is already the second recording. We completely fucked up the first one. So, uh, cheers. Pretend it's all cheers. starts. Cheers. We're yeah. drinking. We are drinking water. Because? Yeah. One of my favorite drinks. And one of mine too. So, I'm super lucky very that good. I didn't need to prepare so much stuff. Cheers, cheers. And um, could you be so kind to quickly tell where we're coming from right now? Now we're coming from the uh, winter juggling event in Holland and uh, I'm heading back home tomorrow but tonight we get to stay in your lovely caravan. Yes. Which is very exciting. Yeah, so we're both exciting. a bit tired from the convention, we both performed and it's, uh, it's been good for me at least, I don't know how was it for you. Yeah, it was good, yeah, enjoyed it lots, uh, a nice audience, very kind audience which is nice. Yeah, I even got to meet your biggest fan. Ah, lovely, yes. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to see that in person sometime. Um, so, yeah, I already asked it one time before, so it's funny in my mind now. You are known, uh, or you were known as this ball side sub monster beast, and now you transferred into some kind of more old school juggling tricks together with street performer style comedy on stage. And I wondered if you would be willing to share again how you got into this transition? How did it start to switch from one to the other? Um, when I was when I was 26, um, I was trying to flash 12 balls. Um, I probably caught 11 of 12, maybe 80 or 90 times. And uh, 80 or 90, like yeah, eight yeah, zero. yeah, eight zero, Jeez. yeah. And I was. I'd, 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 That's a hard way to know. flash 11 balls, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. you can just hold uh, 11. Just hold the 11, yeah. And so I. Um, I was so frustrated that I kicked the squash court wall um, so hard I nearly broke my foot and I thought something had to change and so at the same time I was learning to improvise in music and, and so I'd switched and sort of uh, improvise now in music instead of sight swap and, um, and then I'm a classical juggler learning like classical tricks instead of classical yeah. music yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and then improvising with sight swaps instead of with Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, now sort of playing more jazz and trying to learn the sort of harmony of music. Um, yeah, I never understood music until I started doing juggling and sight swap. That's the okay. point at which I started to get better at music. Oh, we'll get to the relation between juggling and music later. That's somewhere on my list. Cool. Um, but first, uh, there's from breaking your foot nearly on a squash court wall. There's so many directions you can go. You can quit juggling do started playing Diablo, I don't know, how did, why... Not why did Diablo, why <laughs> yeah. did you do that? Go on, sorry. It's there's, there's, there's a way to move on, but then you chose particularly for this uh, combination yeah. trick, balancing, yeah. head bouncing kind of style. Yeah. How'd you end up there? Well, what's, oh, what, what's it worth compared to Diablo in this case then? <laughs> um, it's nice looking for something that other people don't do. Mm -hmm. um, but, but uh, it was the ball spin. I think that was the first one. My friend was learning a ball spin, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to also be able to do it. And um, at one of the BJCs, I saw Rio Yabe speaking of Diablo. Yeah, I was about um, to say. And he was doing he was doing uh, the ring rolling tricks of uh, William Everhart. He juggled as well. Um, he was learning them alongside okay. the Diablo, and it sort of it was nice that he had a hobby within his job. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, five years ago moved over, started doing new things. Yeah. And since then, do you still practice the side for for fun, or you 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 completely only rehearse? Oh no, I, I still do. Uh, I still do side swaps. Um, I like combining them, um, trying to do a bit of old and a bit of new, mm -hmm. which I um, can't do yet. But I think that's on the way generally in the scene. I think we'll have. Um, what, what do you call it? Like a revival of uh, old old tricks, and then I think the two will yeah. really nicely meld together. Hopefully, like you mean in the sense of balancing your Salerno ring, which is the ring with the ball spinning inside, balanced on your forehead, combining those with the ball side or is there other ways you can nice, integrate yeah. them together? That'd be nice. Maybe you could do seven four four, and only the sevens that go through mm -hmm. the ring. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I've been trying with um, with uh, Lewis Kennedy um, to do uh, 
sort of um, headbound tricks with juggling. So maybe you could do six, six, three, three, and the sixes would be two headbound balls. And sort okay, of back ah, okay. So, so you never even other. have them in your hands then. Um, yeah, they would. They'd go from your hand, the six, and then off here, and then back again. Okay. Um, yeah. So you get a lower six then. Yeah, that'd so you be can it. have the yeah, six as yeah. a four height, and then balance it off so it yeah. takes more time. That's clever. Side swap is only a language. It is only a way of describing what is going on. Mm -hmm. and no matter what trick you, to... yeah, no matter what trick you do, you can write that down in side swap and. It's very important that people remember it is a form of expressing it from one person to another, yeah. not a way of juggling. So would you then start with thinking of something to express and then later write it down in a side swap? Uh, that's how I did it a lot, yeah. I know um, uh, Ben Beaver, he did it the other way around a lot, um, to begin with at least. I think, you know, he, was, he, was, he thought of the numbers and then he would learn it. Um, but I am not that clever, so I did it the other way around. I would jam and then find something that would repeat itself, and then eventually somebody else would tell me the site swap. Well. I have to interrupt yeah. for a second, because our tickets are being checked. Oh, really? So, if Ooh. you find yours... We have to show our passports as well, our ID. So, look, where were we? You were uh, talking site about... Swaps, yes. Language, it's only a form of expressing it to somebody else. Indeed, yeah. indeed. But would you then say you're like it's it's you said you can describe any trick by side swaps. Yeah. Would you think it makes sense to try and describe you do the brunt finish? Would it make sense to try and put this into <laughs> four minutes? Now we're getting now we're getting a side swap anyway, or are there exceptions? It's still a language that's developing. Mm -hmm. So the zero, for example, didn't enter maths as a concept for a very long time. And similarly, um, you know, uh, there will be progressions in the will be a concept for balance and forward, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it might not be necessary. What might be more important in situations like that is is the feel, because it's all well and good communicating numbers, but you need to feel what it feels like to do a trick to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Matrix. I know kung fu. Mm -hmm. You know, and he immediately can yeah, do. Yeah. It's because he can feel how it feels to do it. Um, I wonder if you can communicate this feeling in a way. Like, yeah, now that would uh, be a useful uh, one. The numbers yeah. work quite well, actually. I've gotten up to the point myself where I, when I hear a string of numbers that I haven't done before, I can make my hands yeah, move yeah. in a way that... <laughs> yeah. Even if you give me a string of numbers that don't make sense, yeah. I'll still try and execute it because I know what it should feel like, even though I don't know what it, know what it should look like. Yeah, that's how uh, Dan Wood does it a lot. Mm -hmm. Same like, and then just go yeah, first. yeah, and then do it first time, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then in the old school, um, what inspiration did you have in this? How did you? Where? Where? What's the sources of the tricks that you do? Because there, most of them have been done before or in forums. Oh, the people who did it. The people who did it. Um, um, I've never, I've never, I don't, don't, don't know any of them. Yeah, you haven't met any of them. You say I'm after, no, I don't know any of them. No. I, and you call it the Francis Brown finish, and you go on stage saying, "Ah, the finish of Francis Brown. Look back at history." <laughs> yeah, that's not a really good start for a claim then that you haven't heard of them before. Um, I always try and source my material on mm -hmm. stage. I think it's really important. If you're playing a piece by Beethoven, people know it's by Beethoven. Okay. Why should it be any different? Um, and the other advantage of sourcing your material <laughs> is that people who want to learn that skill find it easier to learn. That's that skill, that's just they can go and find the, um, Dave Grohl. If you want to know about music, go and find out your favorite bands, favorite bands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you do that, you can then go find out their favorite you bands. You even source the quotes. You know? And eventually, eventually, yeah, eventually you get back to Bach, of course, because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do the, um, the ring rolling tricks of William Eberhardt that uh, Bob Bramson also did, um, Salerno Ring. Um, By Salerno. Yeah, Salerno. I can't remember his first name at all, though. Uh, um, I, can I. I do a few... Um, Arthur, something with this, I think. <laughs> Might have been also a cat, I can't remember. Um, yeah, and then I do Francis Brun combination trick, um, most of it. Um, there is a video of all of it, but, yeah. uh, but I can't do it on stage yet, all of it. Um, the full combination, I mean. I've not done it on stage, mm -hmm. no. Um, 
Yeah, I think they're the main three. Oh, the rollerballer, balance and juggle. I think that's probably Alexander Kiss. Ah, um, I was going to assume that was original, but indeed, now you say it. Yeah, um, again, I don't do it as well as he does. But oh, he has six yeah. slabs, right? So he does it with uh, eight rings. Um, okay. Eight rings, yeah, and the rollerballer goes like that from yes. the floor. Yes, oh, this is oh, amazing it's contraption. Lovely. It's we lovely. lovely. He made them all. He made everything. Yeah. Did he build those contraptions yeah, himself he really, as well? Yeah, um, he really liked tinkering. Um, a big source of this stuff that I learn about is uh, David Kane's articles that he mm-hmm. writes. Um, you've done some, he said. Yeah, but yeah. not about history. So yeah. David is a history guy. I just write about what I see. <laughs> and where are they? They're on eJuggle. eJuggle, that is the website, mm-hmm. yeah. And he posts them on uh, various forums as well. And they're a great source of, uh, a great source of tricks for you to plunder and then call your own. Yeah, it's just that every prop that is described in these old uh, school jugglers history, you have to build yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you always a builder? Because you have, you have, there's a suitcase full of props with you, which are all unique. Uh, no, um, and I'm really bad at it, and so people have helped. Um, the Salerno ring was done by Jamie Fletcher. Um, the triple Salerno ring that I have, he made that as well. And um, the rings are from Luke Wilson. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, the rings are from Luke Wilson. Uh, not that one. The the triple with the three balls. Okay. Yeah, the white one in the BJC show. Um, yes. Yeah, and uh, Luke Wilson's rings. And you nice. made them into a new trick. Okay, yeah. nice. he did. He Jamie. Oh. Jamie made oh, Jamie that. Jamie made yeah. from Luke he, Wilson's rings. He made rings. that. Yeah. So it's really um, a group effort in a sense. Yeah, he's much better at making than I am. Um, yeah. You can tell when I've made something because it looks like it's going to fall apart any second. Oh, all your props do, but it seems to be more of a style choice than they do because they yeah. actually hold. I, I tried some. They hold well together. Yeah, so. yeah, they're okay. Yeah, yeah. and the Vuvuzela, the balance, uh, the balance there, and the mouth one is uh, Vuvuzela. Um, yeah, they're very, they have a very nice, useful. Nice conical shape that looks. Yeah, I walked. I walked past my friend's Vuvuzela for the best part of a year in the house we used to live in before I went, oh, it's the shape. <laughs> and then I was there and it was all fine. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can so much imagine. Yeah. I, I've played in a, in a show where we had Vuvuzelas on the, pretending to be horns, like they're, they're part of the decoration of the stage. They, they, they're a good shape for lots of different purposes. Mm, yeah, they are a nice shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other things to break some up there, maybe build also head pedestals. Pedestals. Pedestals, yeah. We're beyond head pedestals now. Well, yes, we are. Do a proper balance, ladies and gentlemen. Why? A proper balance. Why? Because <laughs> I think that... Uh, um, so if a slicing performance, which is art, and then mm-hmm. practice, which is perhaps more sporty, if you're trying to push something, mm-hmm. um, performance, use the pedestal. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're going to practice it, then... You know, technically, I think you should go for a standard. I think it's nice to have mm-hmm. a standard. In most sports, they have a standard. Standard weights for javelins, standard engine size for Formula One. And uh, and so the club knob, I think, is a very good standard for a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to do that because I didn't want anybody to say that's not a proper balance. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which they wouldn't have done a hundred years yeah, ago, okay. but now they will. So then you get really into getting a sporty way of, of how do you deal with juggling. Do you, if everybody's doing the same way, then you can't cheat in a sense. Yeah, I mean that's the sporty way is where I came from. That's where I started with juggling. And, but then as a uh, performer, you need to get this variety to stand out and to make it also easy for yourself to do the one thing, which might be the balance, so you can concentrate on the other thing, which might be. Of, uh, being there for your audience, instead that, of your shows, the you also do the, the real the deal. The shows yeah. you make it still as hard as possible, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, sort of. Um, I just got used to the balance, so I'm okay with it. Um, it doesn't feel that much worse. Um, yeah, um, it, your performances are about sort of self-expression. I wouldn't even say it's for the benefit of the audience. You know, um, a lot of it is self-expression, and so. Um, making the aesthetic, the look of it, right is more important than doing the trick correctly, you know. Um, yeah. There used to be a very big debate of is it a sport or is it an art? Yeah, yeah this it's coming it's both. Time. It's both. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. As approaches, I think it's even more, it's not, it's not even binary, it's, uh, yeah. 
there's more that you can take it to. It's a way of life. It's something to enjoy. Excuse, excuse me a second. Take your shoes. Chocolate? No, thanks. Oh, uh, no, no, okay. I'm good. Right. I'm good. Sorry, carry on. carry on. So, on your website, it says you're even professionally trained as a classical violinist. Yeah. I knew you played some music, not up to this level. But what is the overlap between juggling and music? And how do you combine the two? I've seen you do. Um, I'm going to hopefully write a workshop on this soon. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Um, you can yeah. do the digital version already here. Yeah. yeah. Improve, uh, improving your musicality, I think, improves a lot of things in life. Um, so rhythm is obvious, obvious. Mm -hmm. um, pitch, high and low, is high and low. Um, and I think one of the things that a lot of jugglers forget is attack. So how hard it oh, hits your hands. Wait a second. You might need to say that one again. So attack, how hard it hits your hand. Mm -hmm. um, that's something you may want for expression mm -hmm. um, in a performance. But if you're trying to do the hardest trick in the world, you don't want a very high throw slapping in your hand. You don't want that attack. And so you could look at the different parts of music and sort of bring it over and go, oh, actually, no, I don't want that. Um, yeah. Um, tone, how it's played. Mm -hmm. um, and that one could be very useful. Maybe if you're hiding a trick from somebody, that's a different type okay. of tone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's lots of uh, ways to overlap. So all these tr translations of concepts in a way. That one, yeah, yeah. And then, um, I mean, a, a very silly band called the Two Man, One Man Band. Um, mm -hmm. And that one, we try and sort of join things much, much more. Um, Restelli clowns as well, you know. When it I is, oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very little to do with the juggler yeah. Rastelli, but it's much, much more of a combination. Second, There's other people coming in the train. Yeah. Uh, the Rastelli clowns, they do a very musical clowning routine. They have a lot of prop gags with the... Yeah, and of course, flying Karamazovs as well. They do uh, mm -hmm. the, the club hitting. So they do, they have the very uh, yeah, special the, the, types mm -hmm. of yes. clubs. Yeah, yeah. and they, yeah. Um, they've got a lovely notation for it as well. Too. If, okay. you're, if you're throwing a double, the, mu the music so. note has two sticks. Okay. And blob and so then the, two they sticks. They write it in a music school. Yeah, You've yeah. seen some of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know um, some of them, or you had um, to I, uh, I'd love to see that. I did, I did a very, very scary audition for them in London and uh, didn't get the part. So I, put, I met uh, Paul Majid, um, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cool guy. How long does it go to this to perform? I... Whoa, three or four years now. Since they are so much based in the US, I know so little of what they do, actually. It would be yeah, cool there's not here. enough online either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah they are old cool. shows with... Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's good. Um, the multitasking in music comes across nicely as well. If you're playing in a big ensemble, you know, a big group, then then you're very, very responsible for constantly listening out for what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. um, it's not your job to dominate. You know, you're a team. It's like you're all on the same team when you're playing music. And, uh, and so it gives you more of an appreciation of what everyone else is doing around you. And yeah, um, that's very, very important for performing because you're listening constantly to feedback from the audience, trying to, trying to work out what they like, what they don't like. Um, yeah, not that that's how you should do your performances maybe anymore, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, but I mean, being aware on stage is, I guess it's being aware of your audience, similar to being aware of your group of uh, Yeah, that's it, yeah. You're almost trying to, you're almost the conductor and you're trying to play them, you know, you're trying to get them to laugh at the right time or mm -hmm. to be sad at the right time. And Yeah, I think that's it, uh, yeah. And there's a guy called Mark Applebaum, who um, is a classical composer, um, and uh, he's written a piece for three conductors and no players. So it's three people stood on a stage, sort of waving around, etc. Is it in a visual art form, or how did he intend this? And when he realized that composing doesn't just have to be about sound, then he uh, could fuse different things together. So essentially, it's a dance piece, is that one, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, with well, the guise of music, and it's, uh, it's nice. Um, so you can draw from everywhere. It's, 
Yeah, not just music, everywhere. I'll have to look this up. This sounds very interesting. Uh, the Mad Scientist of Music TED Talk, and it's called Mark Applebaum. Yeah, um, it's really cool. Really cool. He's also done a concerto for orchestra and flower arranger, a florist. <laughs> yeah, it's wicked. <laughs> I can imagine so. Mm. Um, and then. The, it's, it's the one-man band who, the, who mentioned the multitasking. It's a one-man band similar to a run finish style trick where there's so much going on at once? Or? I think when you do some, like either of those things, um, it's there's dominant and recessive skills. So, um, for example, um, I can forget about the ring spin on my legs. Yeah. Um, I can never, ever, ever look away from that balance and I have to think about balancing on one leg. So you have dominant skills, and then there's ones you can forget. And multitasking does not exist. Um, we're just about at quantum computers, but that will be the first example of multitasking that I know of. That's genuinely two things at once. Um, multitasking is, for computers at the moment, flipping from thing to thing to thing much quicker than we can. And for us, I think it's finding a way to relate all the skills to each other. So um, balance and juggle. Balance and juggle is really about the distance between one to the other. You maintain the distance like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes one thing in your head, not two. Yeah. And this also applies to the band then? Or, cause then ah, right, yeah. It's a one-man band. Um, so with, like, um, I don't one-man band very much, but it's like the same. With the ah, two-man okay. one, you it's know, it's, it's basically the same thing. And so it's sort of like that. Um, but when a new thing happens, which you don't get so much in multitasking juggling tricks, say you've got to change chord, say you've got to start singing a new verse, mm -hmm. and the recessive skills just stop. Yeah. Like, like, for example, when you're trying your balance and you juggle, you throw your first ball and it falls to yes, the floor indeed. faster oh, than gravity it's, will it's, allow. It's like, you know, bam! It's so you know. weird how you... Do these two basic things, and there's no way to combine them in the very beginning. Yeah. You're starting out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. And so that's a very funny thing to try and get over. Your brain just sort of like crashes, you know, it freezes um, if you're not careful. Um, my friend, who I'm in this silly band with, he can. Who is this? Um, he's a guy called Lawrence Marshall. Um, and yeah, he, um, because he's a drummer to start with, um, he can keep these recessive skills going no matter what, you know, they override everything. It's like he's not even thinking about it anymore, much better than I can. Um, and it means that it can fail somewhere and everything else will keep going. And I can't do that in music as well um, as he can. Yeah, I guess being a drummer helps. This is Yeah, this is, yeah. That's, a, that's the right kind of skill. But I'll, I'll, I'll look, I'm looking forward to uh, ask a juggler, uh, drummer if he can keep the ring spinning on his leg in the same way and combine the mindset. Should, uh, try Toby Walker. Toby Walker, Anthony Gatto. Uh, Did he drums? I heard so. Really cool, yes. didn't know that one. Um, who was the Thomas Dürfer teacher in Berlin? Oh, yeah. That's quite a few. Yeah. So I'll have, I'll have some chance later. Mm, yeah. Hey, up. Six okay. minutes. We have six minutes to be at the station, so we'll close the camera off here and See you in the next train, or maybe in my van. We'll see. Mm, lovely. Did, did you lose your water, or? Uh, no, you lost yours. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, it's in there. I'm a, cool. a, a, I'm sec right. a second train for a second part of the interview. Yeah. And um, while we were switching trains, you mentioned there's an interesting story about why you started juggling in the first place, which I haven't heard yet. So, um, here we go. <laughs> I'm not sure it's interesting, but I just wanted to mention my friend, uh, my friend Paul Taylor. He uh, he uh, he made me juggle uh, at 17. I changed schools, and uh, and he I taught him how to juggle, and then in and he taught me how to learn, and that was good because I wasn't very good at that. I just used to get frustrated exactly and stop. This part is, I think, the most valuable thing of being a juggler and discovering that you can progress if you know how to structure things and how to break them down and like yeah. this is the yeah learning how to learn yeah and he was the one who found the community and uh, site swap and blah 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 and uh, 
and then off we went. Um, I, he started getting better than me, and I wasn't was not having that. And so we went on this epic and wonderful race until he broke his wrist from falling off a rock this high onto soft sand on a beach. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we're still very good friends. He's always around at BJCs and stuff. And, still, yeah, I'm very very grateful to that friend and then Team Shreddies. They were the next lot I went through um, and Lewis was the next one and then uh, you know I'm on my fourth generation of uh, young jugglers now um, to keep me interested mm -hmm. basically along with the community. Yeah, and I guess you have um, some from the older generation still there. Well they're all lazy aren't they? Just lazy and they get proper jobs and wives and stuff and Oof. you know you well, don't want to do things yeah, like no, that I'm, if you want I'm, to be good I'm at something. I'm very happy to still be a younger juggler. Or yeah. 24. I mean, there's no way I can compete with any young types of juggler. Yeah, interested in how's, discussion. How's, how's it feel to like see people break your records and do your tricks but better? And I'm okay with it now. I am okay with it. Um, I, uh, I uh, sort of uh, we had a discussion about uh, inventing things because obviously with mm -hmm. history, uh, I can go. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's 400 years old. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no, plug in baby by Muse. That's really to Carter and Pube by Bark. You know, and you just like, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like some of uh, the things that I invented, found, discovered to be uh, more credited to me. Oh, um, yeah, the way that you credit others, you want them to credit yeah, you too. But that's never going to happen because other people did it better than me. Oh, you've got to name your own tricks after your own name, like the oh, how tip horribly, smash and horribly tip egotistical. <laughs> Why would anybody ever name a trick after themselves? To be sure that everybody else credits them unintentionally. <laughs> and then the other thing you mentioned while we were at the station was the division uh, between the amateur world and the professional world within juggling. Yeah, which there obviously is. I'm. I'm going to go for myself as well. I'm going to go for hobby rather than amateur. But fair uh, points, fair points. But yeah, um, I think there's a lot of people within the community um, that, uh, if they choose to go professional, will struggle as it's mm -hmm. as it continues to separate further and further. Um, as we strive for either creative excellence, like self-expression, um, or um, higher and higher technique, you start to lose what it is to be a performer because you spend your time thinking about not the performing bit. Yeah, well, I, um, most people I've known never start to think of it in the first place. They never consider it yeah. until well, after 10 years of juggling they realize it's a skill that they need to show to package. package. Yeah. You, know, you have to be able to package mm -hmm. it. Um, and it'd be nice if, um, if it was sort of more performance related in a way. Mm -hmm. but. The hobbyist scene in juggling is the best thing that ever happened to it. <laughs> yes. um, the reason is, is because then people were not doing it to earn money, which means that they could do it for self-expression. And at the point it becomes self-expression rather than just a job, it goes from being a trade to an art. Mm -hmm. Bach was in a trade, you know. Beethoven was maybe one of the first people who was in an art form rather than a trade. And Bach, I can see what you're saying. You know, and like Brun, it tried to, they, they all tried to jam in as much of their art as they could. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they had yeah, to please the done, audience. Indeed. And we don't. We Hobbyists don't have to please the audience do you, anymore. Do you consider yourself a hobbyist then? Um, it's very difficult if you turn professional to then have, to keep it as a hobby. You know, you start mm -hmm. to like not like the thing that you really liked. Yeah. And so... Um, if you have a new, like Rio Yabe with the ring rolls, he's mm -hmm. probably never going to do that professionally. That's for him, mm -hmm. you know, and anybody who's going professional, I think it's really nice to have that thing. Yeah. So the Diablo player who does juggling for a hobby just for Yeah, fun. yeah, I'm not doing this on stage. This mm -hmm. is for me, this bit, you know, I and mean, it's really good. Um, I'm just starting to do that again with music. Um, I've written some very silly songs. Just for yourself? And just for myself. Yeah, yeah, I did it when I was meant to be at Glastonbury last year. <laughs> they never sent me the ticket. <laughs> oh. Hopefully I'm going this year. Yeah, yeah. But it remains this fake thing, like even if you consider yourself a hobby juggler, but you perform for other people, you might want them to enjoy it, even if it's a personal thing. Yeah. So there's this fake, like how far do you go in, in 
How are you giving in? Giving in to um, I other sometimes people wishes? I sometimes commercial call it, or not? I call it selling your soul. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's the extreme variant where you yeah. go completely off your interest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, I think if it's really difficult because. Um, like when I was at music college, uh, my composition tutor once said, oh, I wrote that bit because I thought the audience would enjoy a nice melody in this horrible noise you've asked me to write. And he said, no, no, you are the one going through the practice, the writing. It's your thing. And they don't get a say in it. Um, and uh, that was really interesting, but very and, and correct when writing for yourself, you know, but if you are writing for other people, you can't do that. It has to be, has to be for their enjoyment as well, because otherwise it's not an entertainment anymore, um, which is where you might make most of your money. Yeah, and you get an infinite overlap. Like, I, I, it's my hobby to entertain other people, so it's my hobby to make something that fits for other people. Then how do I still understand which part I do for out of my own interest and which are this? Is, yeah. Yeah. That's a mess up. But if you enjoy entertaining other people, mm-hmm. then you know, then it's for you as well. You know, yeah, it, it, it is. definitely no, makes. It, it, uh, I don't doubt of my performance in that sense. But yeah, it's just uh, there's no clear division between this uh, where where my interest in it ends and where it yeah. starts to yeah. be my interest because it's other people's interest. I think we're, um, a lot of people. Like we all like to impress people. We all like people to applaud us for our, our actions, right? Um, there's a Brun. Uh, interview and one of the things he says in it is um, oh I wish they wouldn't clap part way through I wish they'd just wait till the end and just do one clap at the end um, yeah I thought that was very interesting I think I would me I would feel very very lonely um, like that but in music it's like shut up <laughs> let me play my music and then you clap <laughs> you know um, and I feel different about it in music too yeah because clapping is sound so yeah, he must have been inspired also by the dancers that he, he studied to copy and yeah. where in dance is also very it's it's not it's not trick based. It's harder to do when you're doing a trick and he has these poses where it's clearly a signal that people are triggered to oh we know that when there's a pose you go clapping. Mm. Yeah. Must have been a challenge. Yeah. Speaking of the posing, you really nicely copied the brunt poses in your in your show, like all the time you hold do you realize you do it? I have a few. I do a few deliberately. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I hope I chose the ones and I don't copy the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are a few. Um, I like slapstick. I like um, clowning as well. And so the juxtaposition between um, between awesome skill and um, very strict sort of finishes and such uh, juxtaposed with silliness and breaking and everything sort of being on the edge of failure I think it's very exciting and I think it makes both of them shine more you know you do silly 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 wham and people really respond to that it's like, yeah. oh yes it's Dennis the ball spinner what is the ball spinner? Uh, Dennis the ball oh, spinner Dennis, it's a name. with the umbrellas and the ball spinning Ah, and for yeah, a minute yeah. he's sort of a bit clowny and a bit yeah. and then he just goes four, four ball stack yeah, four ball stack I didn't know it was Dennis and, yeah. but then immediately know what you're talking like, about oh. yeah and then you've got them on all fronts the audience you know you, you've got everything mm-hmm. yeah um, I used to do uh, a lot of workshops for um, children uh, no no I don't know him um, yeah, I used to do workshops for children who had been excluded from lots and lots of schools Mm-hmm. And you had to, if you, if you were tried to be clowny and funny with them, they wouldn't respond to that. You had to show them um, that you could really do it and that you were really passionate about it. And then they were like, yeah, well, I've got one of them as well. I like computer games, you know, I like building this, so like, you know. And then you have them and then you can start to worm in the bits that they perhaps don't like. Um, in a similar way, maybe when you are performing for the public or jugglers, you can't make something so abstract that the audience has nothing to latch onto because then they're never going to get it. There has to be a little bit that they can have, you know, and then you could go into that world and then you can become ever more abstract. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to do a one hour show and end with the part where you show what it's like for you, but of course, you just start at the point where your audience is at, which is they have some expectations that you 
need to match your show explains you're going to break them or yeah but I think you do really nicely in your show like you you pose as a as a, as a juggling you show juggling tricks so it's, it's it remains even though it's close to what you like right now it's it's, it's also very clear for audiences what to There's a, take from it a country mile between how I perform now and how I did 10, de- uh, ten years ago um, I used to stand there and go Ooh, like that yeah. and that's how I, I did it I didn't see you before but, uh, before but I suppose there was side falls side stops on music yeah yeah um, there's a variety of terrible performances available online for your viewing pleasure. Um, and then the one that, I'll link in the description. Yeah, the one that really <laughs> cheers. <laughs> I'll give you another black eye. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if you can see, but this is Tiffany. Sorry, sorry. I, I do apologise again. I'm really sorry. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I do get excited about the game Tiddlywinks, and when I lose, I'm really sorry. I just can't go. I completely forgot yeah. about the name of the game we were playing that I, that, that I made yeah. you lose on. But I'm I'm a master Tiddlywinks. You are very good. You are very good. It's it's when you manage to catch one of them in between your buttocks. That was that was the one. I just I couldn't cope with that. I really couldn't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're not only approaching the end of our train ride, but we're also approaching the end of the interview. And there's uh, two more things left for you. The most important one is no wait. The most important we got to the other one is if people want to find out about you, where should they look? Is there a place on the internet that they if you have all your stuff together? And um, where should they? If there's a YouTube channel I can link to, but. What do you prefer? I'm terrible at advertising myself. I don't do it nearly enough. Um, yeah, you get a shot I'd, of like, I'd like very much to start coming to different conventions that aren't in the UK. Uh, MatthewTiffany.co.uk um, or JuggleTiff125 on YouTube. If you put Matthew Tiffany and juggling into Google, I come up very quickly as well nowadays. But yeah, anybody, anybody fancying a very silly but very passionate uh, person to come and do some tricks that you're not going to see anywhere else pretty much at the moment um yeah get in touch i'd love to come over and thank I, you yeah. thank you very much for inviting me i was going to say i can well. vouch for for matthew he was at, at the at the show at the ww and you totally nailed it. everybody loved it Every, i've been getting so much compliments for inviting you over so it, it worked out super so if you run a convention or a show get it on like <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah, oh, it um, does feel horrible to do. Is there something you want to add that you think people should know, that people should learn from this talk? Something we didn't mention, but you'd love to. Um, I say it in my show sometimes as well. Um, how do you know if you're being original, if you don't know what everybody else did? Go find out about the history of the thing that you love. Um, it's really, really important, and not nearly enough jugglers do it. Um, if we did it, maybe maybe we would realize certain things um, about how the scene is today, how it's changing today. Maybe we would realize how inconsistent lots of jugglers are nowadays, and that maybe maybe it's not the best way. Um, I wish that I had gone for consistency over the achievement of whatever I was trying. I wish I'd have looked after my body better as well. I'm 31 and uh, I've had a, a back problem now for a year um, that continues to get me but I think it's under control. Um, I see a lot, a lot of jugglers who are wrecking their bodies for the sake of the trick and it ain't going to do you any favours in 10 years because I was that 10 years ago and uh, I definitely regret bad posture now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. There's some wise advice to stick to. I can also recommend. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if you don't go to circus school, you don't learn it. Yeah, you, you don't learn you it. You don't have a proper teacher. Oh, you can also watch the Juggle Jabber interviews and then you get some, like, look oh, like yes. the one from Gregor. Yeah. This is uh, yeah. supplementary to circus school or uh, instead of circus school, both works. But uh, there'll, be, there'll be a way in the future. This kind of knowledge needs to get out there and yeah. share and study um, more and... It doesn't matter how much knowledge gets out there, it's if you apply it or not, you know. You need a teacher to just, you know, every... Sorry, this is true, sorry. This is we've, true. We've, we've done the fighting already. <laughs> no, but it's, yeah. You're right, like, yeah. without, without a teacher to watch yeah. you, it's going to be harder. Um, I know from my own experience. Yeah, uh, you can, the other way is to video yourself. 
you know, video. Um, I was always recommended music-wise to record my practices, mm -hmm. and that's a good idea because if you review it, you'll go, "Oh my gosh, what the hell do I look like on that one?" You know, mm -hmm. play it next to Ghetto, play it next to Ignatov, you know, and you'll go, "Whoa, why, why am I doing this?" You know. Now I wanted to ask you to do a trick to finish off, but we're in a train. Hey, do you think there's something we can do from here? We can also cut and go into it later. I do see there's some trailing clubs and there is some space. There is some space. You're up to... Uh, I will sort it out and get back to you in a minute, eh? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Helps if the train moves. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the trick known as dickhead. Because whether I succeed or fail, I will look like a dickhead. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew. This Cheers. concludes our interview. I'll put the camera down and shake your hand. Yeah. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's it was a, pleasure a lovely to weekend. Have we'll have a fun evening, I suppose. Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of Juggle Jabber. If you enjoyed my conversation with Matthew, please share it with your friends. This juggling knowledge is only valuable when it's actually being found. If you want to support me, you can leave a comment somewhere with feedback or compliments or this just means the world to me if I hear from listeners and watchers. And also you can like this on YouTube and Facebook and leave a review on iTunes or all over the place right now. This program is being sponsored by the IJA. Thank you very much for the collaboration and cooperation. Speaking of sponsors, um, very soon I'm going to go to Berlin to interview a couple jugglers and this is a big investment of my time, energy and also money. So if somebody would possibly be interested to help me out there a little bit, uh, please do get in touch. Uh, my email address is on the bottom of the description. And for the rest of us, I'll see you next time very soon. Bye bye.